Ugh, dang bugs. According to a 2012 poll by National Geographic, a full 77% of Americans think that there is good evidence aliens have visited the Earth. As a sciencey person who started his career looking at things like UFOs, I just don't see that evidence, but of course, that's exactly what I would say, right? Maybe I'm just under the watchful eye of some men in black-like organization and the only thing keeping me from believing in aliens is frequent memory wipes. So, could you be... But of course, that's exactly what someone like me would say, right? Maybe I'm just under the watchful eye of some men in black-like organization, and the only thing keeping me from believing in aliens is frequent memory wipes. So, so, heh, could you be neuralized? I'm referring to the effect produced by the Neuralizer, a memory wiping device used by the men in black in the comics and movies to delete memories of a specific time and date. It's a useful science fiction tool when you have to convince a group of people they didn't just see an alien or an alien spacecraft, but is there any science to illuminate light-based memory manipulation? To find out, we first need to know exactly what the Neuralizer is supposed to do. According to Agent K, the little red light here isolates and measures electrical impulses in your brain, more specifically, the ones for memory. This thing just loves wiping mems. And according to Men in Black 3, which was surprisingly good, the Neuralizer is actually just the common term for electro-biomechanical neural transmitting zero synapse repositioners. Taken together, it sounds like the Neuralizer emits light which enters your eyes and then enters your brain as electrical signals and then alters your synapses and the electrical signals in your brain somehow. This basic interaction at least makes sense. Here's a typical neuron in your brain. It has a long axon that transmits electrical signals to its neighbors and dendrites that receive electrical signals from its neighbors. And these electrical signals are transmitted across synapses, little gaps between axons and dendrites where neurotransmitters float across, like dopamine or serotonin, and influence how their neighbors are going to fire or not fire. Scientists are still trying to figure out the specifics, but the basics of memory are held right here in the interactions between groups of neurons, how often they fire to each other, how strongly they are connected to one another. This could be a discrete memory. So if you had a device that could alter how neurons interact with each other, you could feasibly disrupt memory. But the Neuralizer isn't sending out bolts of electricity or physically moving synapses around. How would... No, no, no! How would light wipe anything? Actually, one of the biggest neuroscientific breakthroughs in the last decade was figuring out how to control neurons with light. In the last 18 years or so, scientists have developed and exploded the field of optogenetics, or the use of genetic engineering to make certain cells, typically neurons, sensitive to certain kinds of light. To do this, scientists take DNA out of microbes that code for genes that make proteins that are sensitive to light. They take them out and then they plop them into a virus. Then scientists inject those viruses directly into the brain of an animal, like a mouse. Once those brain cells start expressing those genes and making the light-sensitive proteins, then, sorry, then scientists insert a fiber optic cable directly into the mouse's brain. Depending on the genes and the light, the light-sensitive proteins now in the membranes of the mice's neurons can be shot with light and told to open or close or just change how the neuron works on the inside using different kinds of light. And because these are fiber optic cables directly into the mouse's brain, they can be used at ultra high speed, brain speed. In one study on mice, scientists have even used this technique to isolate specific memories in mice and effectively erase them. But mice brains and human brains are very different and you can't just go inserting wires into everyone's face. This is as close as science gets right now, so could there be optogenetic neuralization? Boop. No! I do think that there's a way to do it, but it's very 
conspiracy E. That's fine, this is the Men in Black, right? First, in addition to surveilling every person on the planet, they also flood the food and the water supply with the light-sensitive proteins of optogenetics, but inside viruses. And then once everyone eats and drinks, those viruses make their way to the everyone's eye cells on the planet. Man, these are, these are not to scale. Second, the viruses insert that DNA into the backs of everyone's eyes, into the neurons there, making them susceptible to certain kinds of light. No, I thought, I thought for sure that- Oh no! no. Second, the viruses insert that DNA into the neurons at the backs of everyone's eyes, making them susceptible to certain kinds of light. This is exactly what a company called Retrosense is testing on humans right now. They are using optogenetics to give the neurons at the backs of blind people's eyes sensitivity to light again. This is more or less hacking the input that goes from eye to brain, and this can certainly change how the brain functions. Now, if you had cells at the backs of your eyes that would only trigger in response to a neuralizer's flash and not just visible light, then there is now a pathway where you could plausibly disrupt brain function, maybe even memory. You may have heard of people with photosensitive epilepsy. It's a condition where patterns of light can tickle a susceptible brain in such a way that it causes a misfire, a seizure. If the men in black found or crafted or taught by aliens a certain trigger that could come in through the eyes that would affect anyone's brain in a similar way and affect memory like epilepsy does, then the pathway from light to eyes to brain is there. J or K could neuralize you. So could you be neuralized? Well, if the men in black were able to infect everyone's eyes with the light sensitive proteins of optogenetics and then make sure that those proteins only react to the flash of a neuralizer, then it's plausible that that electrical signal traveling from the eye to the brain could disrupt or excite or otherwise confuse neurons associated with memory like seizures can and do. So in theory, yes, you could be neuralized because science. According to a National Geographic poll in 2020, no, I'm just kidding, we already did that gag. Ha ha, woo, say what, what? I'm Will Smith now, bye, thanks for watching, bye. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes and on Facebook and Instagram where I'm now posting mini episodes in, in addition to all this stuff. And if you want more silliness from me, I am now doing a show called with my friend Dan, it's very silly, check it out. And if you want high quality <laughs> science programming, check out my new show on Alpha, projectalpha.com called The Space Program. It's like Cosmos, but with me, so it's stupid. Thanks. Elvis is dead. He did not just go home. We have, we have his body, like we found it. And why would, why would a giant space roach from another place know that it needs sugar in water. Two things that, how would it possibly? <laughs>